Today I'm going to show you a project that I've been working on. Uh, I got a truck, uh, an 87 Mazda B Series 2200 that I've been working on. Uh, it's kind of a beater, um, uh, but I've been working on it. Uh, it's a truck that I got from my brother. He kind of gave it to me. He kind of gave up on it. He was using it as a daily driver and uh, got some bad information from a guy saying, hey, the motor's blown. It's done for. Uh, so I said, hey, I'll come get it. If the motor's blown, I'll put a, I'll put a big motor in it take it to the track and that'd be my drag truck. Well, I got it here and the motor wasn't blown. Uh, I think it had some, uh, uh, some bad corrosion on the, the plugs and then the distributor. Uh, I really don't know what it was. that they, I got it run and I just started tinkering around with it. Some of the kind of the basic checks you do um, when it went, as a mechanic, you, you check the battery, charge it, had to charge the battery up because it was dead. I started checking the, the plugs and the wires, the distributor cap and rotor, just, you know, the coil. There's some corrosion on it. Just kind of busted all that up. Pulled the carburetor off. It was really dirty and, and nasty. Kind of cleaned it out. Uh, put everything back together and started it up and it, and it ran. Um, the catalytic converter was so stopped up that I had to cut the catalytic converter off. So it's running open pipe right now. But I mean, it wouldn't even run um, won't run right with the catalytic converter off, so it's it's cut off right now. But uh, I'm gonna take you outside outside and show you what uh, what I've done with it and where I'm at right now. And I'm about to to rattle can, about to spray paint the outside of the truck and and kind of show you what I'm about to do with that. So let's go outside and uh, and show you what I'm about to so, do. Okay, so here it is, uh, 1987 Mazda B 2200. Little beater truck, got for nothing. Uh, some gas and towing it from Greensboro, North Carolina to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, you can see it's, hey, it, it is what it is, man. It's got good tires on it. It's missing a windshield wiper blade or arm. It's got some hood pins. Uh, the lights have been changed for something else. Uh, I do have the lens covers, they're cracked. I've got them glued back together. Got to put them back on there. When I when I got it, the turn signals didn't work. The lights didn't work. Uh, the horn didn't work. Um, had to rewire those. Uh, I got that working. Uh, like I said, I got this for my brother, and he doesn't have a key for it. Um, so the way he started it was. And the, the ignition, the ignition switch was just hanging out of the of the, the column here, and uh, it wasn't even the switch, man. It was it was just the tumbler. Uh, the wires were just connected to the tumbler there. So uh, he took a pocket knife, actually a Gerber, stuck it in the tumbler and and turned the switch, and and that's how he started it. So what I did is I wired up a a pilot switch and a push button start and 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 it works pretty good for me uh, and as you can see it starts up and runs pretty good now um, the odometer didn't work nothing on the dash worked got all that working um, as you can see here the centerpiece on the dash is missing so I've got no AC or heat um, so I got a little plastic piece right now that I've fitted to for it, and I've got a, I've got a sheet metal piece that I'm gonna make for it. Um, the doors, the door panels I've got off right now. I'm having them redone. Uh, I bought new door handles for it. Um, they're like they're only like nine dollars on eBay, and I'm having the, the door panels uh, redone. Uh, you know all this stuff you can you can do at home. Um, I'm actually having a, my dad does a lot of uh, reupholstery, reupholstery furniture. So I mean that that takes some no time to, to redo the, the panels. Uh, but all this stuff is simple. Um, to redo the, the ignition switch, you know that took some looking online, looking for the wiring harness, um, and, and do some testing. Uh, but got it figured out. Um, but I mean it runs it runs really good uh, 
reason why I'm, I, this is my little daily driver to and from work. I've got a, a nice, you know, F-150 with really low mileage. I mean, this thing's only got 50,000 miles on it. Uh, but it's got the big V8, the 5.4 liter in it. So it's, I mean, it's a gas guzzler. And this is the, this is the little four cylinder. And uh, it's really, I could probably drive to and from work for two weeks on this, on this tank of gas, little, little 12, 15 gallon tank. So what I had to do to get it running was obviously I had to cut the exhaust off of it. Um, uh, let me, the, the hood prop is missing on this thing. So I've got a little, little redneck little stick to prop this thing up. Uh, so a lot of the vacuum lines were, were hanging off the carburetor, uh, so I plugged them back up, and they were dry rotted, so I had to cut the ends off of uh, like the vacuum advance for the distributor. Um, this tube right here, these are the exhaust gas recirculators, um, kind of like an EGR, but it's an early form of it. Uh, back in the 80s, it reuse the exhaust gas to heat the carburetor um, to heat the carburetor when it's when the engine's cold and it also helped out the the emissions well the carb the the um, Cali converter was so stopped up but that all the exhaust fumes was coming out this little pipe right here and as you can see on the hood that's evident by the um, um, uh, carbon left on the hood there. So once I once I cut off the catalytic converter, I was able to crimp this pipe here, and uh, and, it, and it runs real good here. So the the uh, PVC valve little grommet there for the valve cover was dry rotted. So I've got a little Jimmy rig, little um, uh, little electrical tape right there just to kind of hold it in place. Uh, got a little air breather for it um, but you can I can I can take all this off but I mean there's really no point you can get a Weber carburetor for these motors they're like two hundred dollars I just I just don't see the, the value in it uh, you can get a pace setter um, header for it to eliminate all this eliminate all this once again, I just don't see the value in it. I mean, a lot of people do hook these trucks up. It's really easy to lower these things uh, by just flipping the, the front ball joint and put some, some blocks on the rear end there because it's leaf springs. I mean, you can lower it real real cheap um, by just a couple of bolts and some, some lowering blocks on the rear end there. I mean, less than 50 bucks. I mean, you're, you're, you're lowered two inches. Hey, I, I, I'm a daily driver here. But I do want it to look good, uh, somewhat good. So I've been working on it. I painted the front front grill here. Um, so what, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to show you how to just kind of do a basic rattle can paint job on your vehicle. So what I did is I went to your local dollar store and got your cheap rattle can paint. And I think this is like a dollar and a quarter. Uh, to, to, to rattle can it. Uh, what you want to do first is you obviously want to wash it, get all your dirt and grime off of it, which I've already done. And then you want to take like a scotch bright pad and scuff it down where you're going to paint. You want, you want that paint to be able to, to stick to something. If it's a really slick and smooth surface, that paint's going to fl flake off over time. And you want, you got to be uh, mindful of your environment. Right now, we're probably about 60, we're probably about 70, 80 degrees, which is perfect. We don't have a lot of wind, so we're not going to blow dust into the paint. Uh, so I can do this outside. Um, so we're going to get started.
you want to make sure your cans, you know, you see everybody shaking their cans. Uh, you want to make sure it's good to shook up. Make sure all the, the chemicals are good and, and blended in there. So you hear that little ball in there shaking around. You don't want to make sure the can's real cold. You want to make sure it's kind of room temperature or ambient temperature. Um, kind of already started it here. So I'm going to go back over that. Uh, you can make this look really good. You see some kind of janky rattle can paint job. You can make rattle can paint jobs look really good. Once you spray paint it, you let it sit. Then you go back over and wet sand it with a fine wet sand, a uh, wet um, sand paper. Do it again, spray paint it. You repeat the process and you get a really good looking um, uh, paint job uh, for really cheap. Now it, it is what it is, um, but you can almost make it look like, like you took it somewhere and had it painted. I'm not going to do that because, uh, you know, this is just a little beater truck. But, I mean, if that's something that, you, that you're interested in, by all means, um, look into that. Uh, and then when you get around your windows, use, you, know, you want to tape it off, use that painter's tape, blue painter's tape, tape off your windows to keep the tape off of it. Anywhere that you don't want your paint to get, you're going to tape it off with some newspaper, tape, plastic uh, paint, paint with uh, plastics to keep that paint off of it. Now when you do this, you want to do long stripes and, and when you get the paint going here. And let off. Let off the trigger when you get off the surface that you want to paint. You don't want to stay in one place too long because then it's going to fish eye or you're going to have paint that runs. Everybody's seen it where you know, whoever did this last time, you know, did the same thing where you let it drip or, or, or run. So what I'm doing right now is just getting all the overspray off of the windshield. Very easy to do. Razor blade. And I'm just gonna, just gonna scrape it off the windshield. And then once you get done with that, just uh, some Windex. And this doesn't scratch the window. Uh, what you see is just dirt. Um, and so when you're done with that, <clears throat> you just clean the windows and I'm done. Uh, as you can see, you know, just your basic rattle can paint job. Uh, it is striped. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it kind of cure and, and set. And then go back and do it again. The paint cost me about $12, uh, another couple cans, probably another $10 of paint, uh, it'll look really good. Um, so there you have it, take it or leave it. Alright, uh, if you like what you see, uh, subscribe to my channel or, or leave a comment below. Uh, have a good one.